Do you wake up dreading going to work? If Monday blues are true for you, then this video is for you. Now we spend approximately 70,000 hours of our life working and that's a pretty big number of hours to be unhappy with during our lifetime. So today I'm going to be sharing with you five tips that you can use to be happy at work. The first tip that I have for you is to remind yourself why you said yes to this job. Now I've changed about five jobs in my career. And if you are like me, then you probably created a pros and cons list before you said yes to your current job. If you didn't, now is the time to create that list. List down all the reasons why you took that job. For example, it could be you took the current job because of the benefits. You took it because of the money that it pays. You took it because of the title. You took it because of extended responsibilities. And once you create that list, identify what is still true. So if 70% of those reasons why this, you took this job are still true and they're working for you, then you have to reset your mindset. You have to reset that the reasons that you took this job for are still true. So there's no reason for you to be unhappy. And that's, that's an identification. That's a little... Uh, you know, reminder to you that you are putting too much pressure on this job to make you happy, even when it's meeting 70% of the goals that you set this job for, right? So that is important. It's important to understand why you took this job in the first place and whether the job is still meeting your requirements or not. So that's the first tip. The second tip is to switch up your routine. If your routine is to get up in the morning and get busy with your emails, please change it. If your routine is that you create a to-do list early in the morning, start doing it a night before. But basically what you want to do is you want to build your schedule in such a manner so that your energy levels do not drop down during the course of the day. So what do I do to switch up my routines? After every few hours during my day, I... I plan for activities that give me an energy boost. So for example, uh, sharing my thoughts on social media gives me a boost. Um, recording a podcast gives me a boost. Talking to my network gives me a boost. So I plan my day in such a manner that I naturally build these energy boosters in my schedule to keep my energy levels high during the day. So that's my second tip for you switch up your routine. The third tip that I have for you is to add a new goal to your life. Now, unhappiness typically stems from discontentment. It stems from complacency. And what you want to do is you don't want to be complacent in your role. What you want to do is you want to identify a new goal in your life. And this goal can be anything. This goal could be professional development. It could be personal development. It could be a new hobby like learning how to play guitar or bike riding or getting yourself in shape or reading five new books this month. But give yourself a new goal in your life. And by doing that, what you are doing is you're basically taking away the power that you have currently given to your job to keep you, keep you happy and focus and channelize that energy into the new hobby. And what you're doing is you're diversifying that source of happiness now to another hobby to keep you happy. And when that happens, the pressure on your relationship with, with your job reduces and that's why you're more happy. So I frequently pick up a new hobby or pick up a new goal for myself. I actually do it every other month just to do a check on myself. Am I doing good with these goals that I currently have or do I need to switch up a new goal? To switch up to a new goal. So a while back, I started my podcast. And the reason behind that was that I wanted to have another source of happiness in my life. Then after some time, I added Alexa skills to my portfolio. And that was because I wanted another, another source of happiness. And every time I receive emails from my audience, letting me know what a difference I'm making in their lives, through either my EVO initiative or through my YouTube videos or through my podcasts 
or my speaking engagements, it makes me happy. And what I've done in this process is I've taken away that source of unhappiness that sat with my job to all these different platforms where I now find joy. So that was my third tip for you. Add a new goal to your life. My fourth tip for you is to eliminate energy drainers. So I have realized that the people whom I whom I'm friends with or co-workers with at work, but every time I talk to them, I feel like they put me in a negative mindset. I feel like they drain my energy. So what I have started doing is I've identified I've started identifying these sources of energy drainers in my life and I have started slowly eliminating them. Now you would say, Russian, there are so many energy drainers that I have in my life and I can possibly not stop talking to them. It's, my, it's a requirement on my work front to be able to you know, work and collaborate with these people. So I'm not saying that you stop collaborating with these people, but you change the focus of your conversations. And once you do that, you would realize that after you hang up, after you're done with your calls with these people, you would not start feeling low. I will tell you that I used to work with one of my co-workers, great person to work with, great ideas. But every time I spoke to him, I felt like there was so much that I did not know. And he would not leave me in a, in a that conversation would not leave me in a great state of mind. It would actually make me feel like I did not know about my job or I did not know enough what was going on in the industry. And that was not true. So what I had to do was I had to change the context of my conversations with this person. And when I changed the context of the conversations with this person and did not allow him to get into my energy sphere around me, I realized that my conversations with him became more effective and I ended those calls still feeling great about myself. So eliminate those energy drainers from your life if you can. And my fifth and the last tip that I have for you is to remember that work is not democracy. You will always come across people who are not going to love you. You're going to have conflicts as well. You will have to negotiate. And there'll be energy drainers around you. But you have to remember that work is not democracy. So do not put that pressure on everybody, including work, to keep you happy, to, to keep you as the focal point of their conversation. And when that mindset shift happens, when that change in perspective happens, you will notice that you are by default more happy at work. So those are my five tips on how to be happy at work. I would love to know from you how you can use these tips in your day-to-day -day life and find happiness in work. And if you're using any other techniques, please make sure to write those in the comment section below because you'll be sharing it with the audience and me and I will try those tips too. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, now is the time to hit on the subscribe button and click on notification bell icon so that you get informed every time I upload a new video. Have a wonderful, wonderful week and keep succeeding.